when it comes to the man who fell to earth, admittedly that first 30 seconds may make you think, mm, I don't want to watch this. But then after that, it starts to get a little bit bizarre when it comes to Faraday, and with that you get hooked. So to briefly summarize what happens in the first episode, Kay Faraday, who is someone who named himself after the cop who arrested him, comes to Earth, crash lands, and he's not an alien that already speaks English or knows American customs. He's someone that is completely naive, and with that, he little by little has to learn everything, which has some comical results. But at the same time, it also complicates this mission he has, which is to find a woman named Justin Falls. Now, why is he trying to find Justin Falls? Well, she was an EI... <laughs> she was an MIT student who was looking into plasma energy and because of a failure that happened it seems she kind of cut herself off from that world and then made herself small made her life manageable and ended up somehow in New Mexico there's a lot of mystery that goes on with how she ended up there but that's for later time what matters is Faraday finds her and then he spends quite some time trying to convince her to take him seriously and also his mission this is difficult because Faraday has a sickly father named Josiah. She has a daughter to take care of. And so this strange man who she's never met before, knowing about her research, knowing her name, able to hear conversations while he seems to be asleep, it freaks her out. Dad on top of him having hundreds of dollars after he somehow gurgitated almost $25,000 worth of gold rings. But again, this show is very weird and bizarre. <laughs> And it only gets weirder as you start to see Faraday interact with people and Justin not really sure how to handle how he speaks to people. For when it comes to how Justin originally started off, he's meeting people who makes it seem that yelling loudly and saying the F word, that's how you get things. So he does that whenever he deals with people, whether he wants water or if he wants Justin to come with him. She shuts that down, but there's still some residual social niceties that Faraday doesn't get. So in order to kind of give him some grace, or at least have people give him grace, she just knows that he's on the spectrum. And with that, there's some peace until it becomes time for them to complete the first part of Faraday's mission, which is to meet his mentor, known as Thomas Newton, seemingly no relation to the one that we know. And with that, she decides this has gone too far. <laughs> she just is going to leave him where he is and he can go on this mission alone. But as he roped her in before with having tapped or exploited her empathy, he does it again. And with that, he walks into a cyclone, tornado type of thing. And she, for whatever reason, despite her issues with him, drives almost right up to it and goes towards him and seemingly gets sucked in as well like she's Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. So when it comes to the highlights for this show, rather this first episode, it would definitely be the Faraday we meet who is new to Earth, who is getting adjusted, and how Justin reacts to him. With that, you get this character who I would say in seeing his humanity and seeing his innocence and seeing his naivety that's someone you can attach to and then when you bring in his eccentric ways and how he deals with people it does veer toward the bizarre but it's the type of bizarre which makes you interested and not the type of bizarre that kind of pushes you away plus it's hard to not think of it as kind of funny especially since a lot of people don't know how to take what he says or how he acts since it's just I mean, if somebody thinks that you have to be loud and scream the F word in order to get anything, it's comical at first. It's like watching a little kid cuss. At first, it's funny, it's hilarious, but after a while, you're just like, cut it out, you're embarrassing me. And that's sort of how Justin approaches it. In a way, she's kind of like, oh my God, what is this when it first comes to meeting Faraday? And you can tell that with her thinking that he's a bit off, she wants to humor him, especially when he pulls out $100 of bills and her being currently unemployed. Yet, as time goes on, he starts talking about when her dad should die and stuff like that. 
you can tell it's no longer funny to her, but there's something about their dynamic that you really want to get into, especially since he keeps pushing the idea that she's important to the world, that she's important to his people, He's she's important in general, which... I don't know. Maybe it's because you don't really see a lot of black women put in that position where they can save the world and you have this black dude who makes it seem like she's not just going to save his world, but she can save her own world. If not, who knows, maybe the rest of the universe. So it really props up Justin in a way that makes it so you have to kind of fall for Faraday in the process. But as we're about to get into it on the fence portion, Faraday in the beginning almost messes this whole show up. Now, in order to kind of explain how Faraday is, especially towards the beginning of the show and in the latter half, especially once he gets acclimated to American culture and English, you have to look at it sort of like Steve Jobs, sort of like the Apple founder Steve Jobs. He, with the way that he's portrayed, that is Faraday. You kind of get the vibe in the first 30 seconds that he's this type of person that you're not meant to connect with. He's this type of person that's supposed to be larger than life. And like Steve Jobs, either you're going to be impressed by his brilliance or completely turned off for you interpret the way that he acts as just pure ignorance. Mm, not ignorance, but arrogance. And I would say that can lead to a bit of an adverse reaction for it. With this being so much to watch, I feel like most shows really do take a chance of not trying to hit you with that hook quickly. And with the way that Faraday is, you don't really get that hook as soon as you need it. Instead, you have to wait a bit. And for me, I get it in the long run that Faraday is somebody with a finite, finite, finite? <laughs> that Faraday is somebody with a finite amount of time, so he doesn't really have the luxury for social niceties. And then when he gets to the point of being on that stage talking to humans, he's trying to sell them a product that, whether it's something that he needs funding for or something that he needs to be widely taken in by consumers, he's there for a purpose that's beyond, let me be your friend, sell you this thing like I'm some car salesman trying to make a buck. I He has this mindset of rather I need you to adopt this as soon as possible because maybe the shared use of this product is what's going to save my world your world and perhaps the universe and with that you get it he's not somebody that you like instantly he's more so the type of character who in the words of Jill Scott is a wood burning oven type of thing cold distant when it first starts up but once you get warmed up to it is nice toasty and makes you all warm and fuzzy in a way in terms of our initial impression, I think once you start to understand who Faraday is trying to be or what he needs to be, this becomes a much easier show to digest. And once you really take on how Justin's going to play a major role in what Faraday needs, and not in a way that's just going to be him continually exploiting her, but her living up to her potential and really being the person that she was meant to be, that is probably what's going to save the man who fell to earth for you. And add in that the chemistry between, Ju I won't even say chemistry, the compatibility between Justin and Faraday when they're butting heads or when they're having those weird moments is also an asset. I do think that between this and the First Lady, Showtime definitely has a good batch for Sundays that's going to keep subscribers happy.